So in this question, we have a fluid water that is in motion. It's traveling through this constricted pipe. And when you have fluids in motion, then often you're going to be solving your problem by using Bernoulli's equation, which we have outlined in that yellowish box below. Now, to use Bernoulli's equation, we have to write down all of the known values. So let's go digging for those values. We're going to start at the left side of this constricted pipe, and we're going to write down the pressure at that location. And the question states that the pressure at the left side of the pipe, also known as P sub 1, was equal to 1.75 times 10 to the power of 5, and that's measured in pascals. Now, we also know the value of the height at that point. If you look carefully at the diagram, you have this horizontal line that runs across the bottom. And what you can do is set that to equal zero meters in height. That could basically be sort of like your ground level. So really what we could say is that over here that the value of Y1 is going to equal zero meters. Now, this is water flowing through, so we know that the density of the fluid is going to be the density of water, which of course is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. Let's head over to the right side of the pipe and write down some known values. The right side is using a subscript of 2, and therefore P sub 2, the pressure at the right side of the pipe, is this value here. We have 1.2 times 10 to the power of 5 pascals. And then as far as the height is concerned, this will be y sub 2. The question noted that y in the diagram was 2.5 meters. So this height up here, we are now calling that y sub 2, and that measurement is going to be 2.5 meters. Now, with those data, we can go ahead and plug into Bernoulli's equation. It might also be worth noting that g, of course, is 9.8 meters per second squared. So we'll plug all of those known values into Bernoulli's equation. So all of the values have been plugged in, and it's quite a lengthy equation. We can simplify it just a little bit. So we see right here that we're multiplying by zero. So this is going to zero out. So we'll get rid of that. And what we're going to actually want to do is just kind of rearrange this equation. It will become more apparent why we're doing it in this manner in just a moment. But just to get things going here, why don't we go ahead and subtract this 1.2 times 10 to the power of 5 from both sides of the equation. That'll cancel it out on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, we'll end up with 0 0.55 times 10 to the power of 5. Now, we can continue simplifying just a little bit here. For example, we have this 1 half times 1,000, so that's going to be 500 times the V sub 1 squared. Over on the other side, we have the same idea over here. 1 half times 1,000 is going to give us 500. That'll be times V sub 2 squared. And then we can actually pick up our calculators and simplify this value by multiplying it out. And when you do that, you get 24,500. Okay, so far so good. We're going to continue rearranging the equation. Next, perhaps we can subtract that 24,500 from both sides. And then you could pick up a calculator and subtract those two values right there. You end up with 30,500. Now, we're going to next subtract the 500 V sub 1 squared. So we'll go ahead and do that on both sides. This cancels it out on the left-hand side. And what's interesting here is that we have the same coefficient in front of our two velocity squareds. So what we'll do is just divide each term of the equation by that coefficient. So we'll divide everything by 500. That will cancel it out completely on the right-hand side. And we're left with 61 on this side, and this is equal to v sub 2 squared minus v sub 1 squared. Now this is great, but we still have two unknowns. We have v sub 2 and v sub 1. These are the velocities at the right and left sides of that constricted pipe. But we need another equation in order to solve for them. So let's take a look at the equation of continuity next. And we can actually take the equation of continuity and manipulate it a little further. We'll begin with this a sub 1. Now that's going to be the cross-sectional area of the circular end of the pipe. Of course, a circular cross-sectional area would be equal to pi times the radius squared, and then times that velocity at the left end of the pipe. Similarly, we will expand a sub 2 
That is also circular in cross section, so that'll be pi times its radius squared, and then times v sub 2. Now this is nice. Pi appears on both sides of the equation, so you can divide both sides by pi to cancel it out. And then we can actually plug in the radii that were given in the question. Let's go ahead and list those. So r sub 1 was the radius of the left side of the pipe, r sub 2 is the radius of the right side. So we can actually plug these in to our simplified equation of continuity. We'll have this 3 centimeters squared times v sub 1, and then on the other side we'll have this 1.5 centimeters squared for v sub 2. We'll simplify by squaring those quantities. So we'll end up with 9 centimeters squared multiplied by v sub 1, and this will equal 2.25 centimeters squared times v sub 2. Now, we're getting there, but it's going to turn out to be useful to solve this for v sub 2. So go ahead and divide both sides by 2.25 centimeters squared so that we can cancel it on the right-hand side. The left-hand side, when you divide, the centimeters squared will cancel, and then 9 divided by 2.25 is 4. So we have 4 times v sub 1 is equal to v sub 2. This is going to be a very useful result, because if we go back to our equation above, we can actually begin to plug into it. Let's look at that equation. We derived that from Bernoulli's equation. We will simply go ahead now and make a substitution. We're going to take v sub 2 and substitute it with 4 times v sub 1. Don't forget to square that. Now we're going to simplify here. We're going to square the 4 to make 16, square the v sub 1 as well. And this is neat because now we can actually combine like terms. 16 minus 1 is 15 v sub 1 squared. And now just divide both sides of this by 15. The left uh, hand side becomes about 4.07. This is equal to v sub 1 squared. And then to finish off solving for v sub 1, just take the square root. And when you do that, you're going to get about 2.02 .02 meters per second. That's going to be the speed of the water at the left end of the pipe. That was the correct answer for part A. In part B, we just need to find the speed of the water at the other end of the pipe. And we know that that is simply 4 times v sub 1. So we'll plug in the value we got from part A. And when we simplify this, we see that V sub 2 is about 8.07 meters per second, or 8.08 .08 would work as well. That is the correct answer to part B. And then part C wanted the volume flow rate, which is typically symbolized by Q. And you could solve that in two different ways. You could either take the cross-sectional area at the left endpoint of the pipe and multiply it by the velocity there, or you can take the cross-sectional area at the right point and multiply by its velocity there. We will choose the former approach. So remember that for area 1, you would have pi times radius 1 squared. So now let's just go ahead and plug in the data. Be a little bit careful, though, because when you plug in the radius at the left end of the pipe, it was 3 centimeters. You want to convert that into meters by multiplying by 10 to the negative 2. So just make sure you do that. Also square that radius, and then we'll multiply that by the velocity that we found at the left end of the pipe. And when you punch that into your calculator, you should get approximately 5.70 times 10 to the minus 3. Dimensionally, if you look carefully, you have meters squared times meters, so that turns out to be meters cubed, and then that's meters cubed per second. So this is the final answer to part C.